I would like to thank you for attending tonight's webinar, Collections, How to Deal with Tax Bill Bills. This webinar is brought to you from Brooklyn Legal Services Corporation A or Brooklyn A's Consumer Economic Advocacy Program. My name is Kendra Dunstan. I'm the Development External Affairs Coordinator here at Brooklyn A. Brooklyn A believes all New Yorkers should have equal access to legal services to seek justice, make their voices heard, and overcome systemic racism and oppression. Established in 1968 as part of the war on poverty, Brooklyn A believes attorneys have a critical role to play in combating poverty, inequity, and racism. Our civil legal services, organizing efforts, and educational resources assist our clients and their communities in defending and mobilizing against harassment, displacement, and gentrification, and asserting their rights. Tonight's program is brought to you from our Consumer Economic Advocacy Program, or CEA, where they prevent foreclosures and defend against predatory lending. They resolve tax issues with the IRS for low-income taxpayers and strive to ensure that vulnerable groups have strong safeguards in place to help them build and maintain assets throughout their financial lives. Additionally, under the CEA program, we have a domestic violence unit that offers assistance with orders of protection, child custody and support, and more. Our two other practice, practice areas are Preserving Affordable Housing, or PAH, and they assist with matters revolving eviction prevention, anti-harassment, fair housing claims, tenant organizing, repairs and essential services, and more. And then we have the Community Economic Development Program, or CED, that assists uh, folks with commercial lease assistance for new and existing businesses, advice on laws and options. We help negotiate rent arrears, rent and arrears, and commercial tenant harassment. We also assist with nonprofit and corporate and corporation and startup services. Tonight, we have three very special presenters um, and they are this year's uh, legal interns. Um, tonight, we have O'Neill Gibson. O'Neill is a rising 2L at the Maurice A. Dean School of Law at Hofstra University. Before attending Hofstra Law, he graduated from John Jay College of Criminal Justice, cum laude, with his Bachelor's of Arts in Humanities and Justice and a certification in dispute resolution. He hopes to learn more about different areas of the law. Also presenting tonight is Bella Guan. Bella is a rising 2L student at New York University School of Law. Prior to law school, she earned a BA in Philosophy and Finance from the College of William Mary. Working with the CA program at Brooklyn A, Bella hopes to put her passion in law to good use by advocating for underrepresented, underrepresented communities and contributing to meaningful legal causes. And we have Kevin Wong. Kevin joins Brooklyn A as a first year law student from Brooklyn Law School. Kevin earned his BA in business administration at Brooklyn College. Serving the consumer economic advocacy team at Brooklyn A, Kevin hopes to advocate and assist community members. And they are all under the amazing leadership of Brooklyn A's Director of Community Consumer Economic Advocacy, Tamara Delcomen, who is our in-house expert. So before we get started, um, just wanted to give you a little bit more about the uh, the advocacy that we cover here. Um, we have the domestic violence, a low uh, tax a payer, a low income taxpayer assistant, bankruptcy, and foreclosure assistance. Tonight's agenda, we will cover how to handle a tax bill, common tax scams, payment plans, payment alternatives. And at the end, we will have a Q&A. And we are just about ready to get started. But before we do, I would like to let you know that we will have a Q&A at the end of the program where you will be able to either type your questions in the chat box or you can raise your hand and we can unmute you and you can ask the panelists your questions directly. Um, please keep in mind, we will do our best to get to all of the questions um, during this live webinar. If we cannot get to all the questions, we will leave you with contact information at the end, and we will get back to you with answers. So with that, I'll turn it over to O'Neill. Thank you so much. So as we said, we're going to get the presentation started, and we would like to break it down into a few steps. So what steps should you take if you receive a bill from the New York State or the IRS? The first step is to review the notice carefully. You want to get a full understanding of what's going on, and you want to be aware of what the situation is at hand. The second step is be mindful of possible scams. There are many scams that are out here. Can you please go to the next slide, please? Thank you so much. There are common scams and we needed to address it in two different slides. Whenever you receive a notice 
from anywhere, whether it's the IRS or New York State, you should be cautious of tax scams as these are intended to take your money and personal information. Some of the common scams that are out there that include posts on social media platforms that circulate incorrect tax information, third parties that act as though they're trying to be helpful, and this could also be suspicious communication that pose as government agencies or other tax professionals. This is also known as phishing. Once again, this is very important and you want to be very mindful of different varieties of scams, especially in this day and age with technology and social media. A bunch of new scams could be coming out. So you want to be very mindful. Can you go back for me, please? <laughs> Thank you. The third slide, the third step is respond promptly to the notice. This is very important as you want to be able to take care of the issue at hand as quickly as possible. The fourth step is pay the amount owed. And the fifth step is consider payment alternatives if you cannot afford to pay the full balance. If you can't pay the federal tax debt in full right away, there are three options for you. You can currently, you can look into current, you can go into currently non-collectible status. There are also payment plans that are available. And then there's also an offer and compromise that is available to you. And now I'd like to turn it over to Bella. Now, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, again, thank you for joining us today. I'm Bella and here to help you understand your options if you find yourself unable to pay your federal tax bill in full right away. Um, this can be a very stressful situation, but there are several ways the IRS can work with you to manage your tax debt. We'll cover three main options, cur currently not collectible status, payment plans, as well as offers in compromise. So first, let's talk about the currently not collectible status, or a CNC. If paying your IRS tax liability presents a significant financial hardship, you may qualify for CNC status. This could apply if you're on a fixed income, on employee, or face urgent situations like eviction. To request CNC status, you need to contact the IRS Collections Department. It's important to keep in mind that being in CNC status doesn't eliminate your tax debt. It merely pauses the collection efforts interest and penalties will continue to accrue and you will still receive tax notices. However, this can provide temporary relief while you manage your financial situation. Next, um, let's explore payment plans. The IRS offers two main types of payment plans, short-term and long-term. For a short-term payment plan, you have up to 180 days or about six months to pay off your debt. There's no set fee, but penalties and interest will, will continue to accrue until the balance is paid in full. You can make payments directly from your bank account by check, money order, or with a debit or credit card. For those needing more time, there's the long-term payment plan, also known as an installment agreement. There are two options here. Um, first is automated payments, which has a set of fee of, of $31 if you pay, apply online and 107 if you apply by phone, mail, or a person, as well as the non-automated payments, which has a set of fee of 130 if you apply online and a set of fee of two, 225 if you apply by phone, mail, or in person. These plans allow you to make monthly payments over an, an extended time, making your tax debt more manageable. Lastly, we have the Offering Compromise, or OIC. This option allows you to negotiate with, with the IRS to settle your tax debt for less than the full amount you owe. In some cases, the IRS approves an offer as low as $1. And to qualify for an OIC, you must demonstrate that paying your full tax debt would cause a significant, significant financial hardship. You'll need, to provide, you'll need to provide detailed financial documentation showing that your monthly income doesn't significantly exceed 
for monthly expenses. Here is an application fee of 205, but it is paid for income, low income taxpayers. The forms required for, for an offering compromise includes form 433A or 433B and form 1656. Form 433A and form 433B are collection information statements. They collect detailed financial information about your income, expenses, assets, and liabilities. For individuals, Form 433A is used, while businesses use Form 433B. This information can help the IRS assess your ability to pay. And for Form 656 is the offering compromise application itself. In this form, you propose the amount you can pay to settle your tax debt. It also includes your explanation for why you cannot pay the full amount. You need to include a non-refundable application fee of 205, which is waived if you meet the IRS low-income low criteria. Along with these forms, you'll need to submit bare supporting documents. These typically include three months of bank statements to show your financial transactions, a lease agreement to verify your housing expenses, as well as other relevant financial documents like child support bills and pay stubs to provide a comprehensive view of your financial situation. Once you submit your OIC application and supporting documents, the IRS will review your financial situation to determine if your offer is reasonable. And if the IRS accepts your offer, you'll have to adhere to the terms and make the agreed agreed upon payments. This settlement will resolve your tax debt. However, if your offer is, re is rejected, you can appeal the decision or consider other payment options. So in summary, if you can't pay your federal tax bill in full right away, you have options. The currently not collectible status can provide temporary relief. Payment plans can spread out, spread out your payments over time and offering compromise can potentially reduce your total tax debt. Each option has its own qualifications and application processes. So it's important to assess your situation and choose the, the best path for you. And now I'll pass, pass it on to my colleague, Kevin, who will introduce your options if you can pay your state tax in full. Okay, thank you, Bella. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Kevin Huang. I'm a rising 2L at Brooklyn Law School and a summer intern at BKA with the Consumer Economic and Advocacy Team. I'm going to begin by introducing what taxpayers should do if they find it hard to pay the tax bills for the um, New York State. So, but first, if you receive a tax bill from the New York State, please do not just ignore it because it's not from the IRS. It's still a tax bill and New York States can use many methods to collect your tax. For example, they can garnish your tax return from a uh, ta tax refund from your return. If you have a tax bill from the New York State, it's important to pay it before penalties and interest accrue significantly. You might find yourself unable to pay the entire tax debt and here are some solutions for you. The first approach is listed in the picture is that the taxpayers can take the installment payment agreement plan. And the second approach is doing the offering compromise. For the installment agreement, there's no fee required to set up the payment plan and the taxpayers can apply online. After getting approved, taxpayers can make monthly payments. In general, the, tax pay, uh, the payments plan is a good way to slowly pay off the debt However, the interest does not decrease or stop, meaning that taxpayer will eventually pay more in total. And for this one, it's very similar to the IRS too. But on the other hand, if you cannot enter an installment payment plan and you cannot afford the total amount, the penalty and interest will accrue. And therefore, the, the installment agreement plan is a good way to help the taxpayers to pay off the debts in a stable way. A question here is can be what will happen if a taxpayer miss one of the monthly payment? When a taxpayer completes the installment agreement payment applications, the default payments method here is the direct deposit from their bank account. 
um, making it unlikely to miss a payment. However, if a taxpayer choose another payment method, New York State will send a notice to you if you miss a payment, and the taxpayers will need to pay the overdue amounts by the next payment due dates in addition to the regular monthly payment. If the taxpayers miss the next due dates to pay the overdue amount, a default on the payment plan might occur and a potential collection actions may take place. Overall, we recommend this approach to our taxpayers as it can avoid a forced levies from the New York State and it can finish their tax debt in a, in a slow but stable way. However, uh, taxpayers' financial situations vary. A taxpayers might need to pay $5,000 tax debt and if they apply for the payment plan, they still need to uh, pay for $200 to $300 monthly. Such an amount can still be a burden adding to their over their already overload monthly expenses. An alternative solutions here is the New York State OIC. Kincher, can you turn to the next page, please? Um, New York State OIC. To complete the New York State OIC, the clients need to fill out two forms, DTF 4.1 and DTF 5.0. The taxpayers also need to provide the supporting documents, which typically includes the credit report, the last 12 months of bank statements, and the tax returns for the past three years. Uh, please note here, like uh, the documents you need for New York State is slightly different than um, the IRS one. But much like the IRS OIC, the New York State OIC takes weeks to proceed to. Typically, it involves several conversations among the taxpayers, the taxpayers' representatives, and the agents. After lengthy discussions, the taxpayers will receive a decision of either approve or denial. However, interest and penalties does not freeze during the time, meaning that the taxpayers must continue to manage those additional costs. If the OIC is approved, the taxpayers can reduce the total amounts owed However, there's no guarantees of approval as the evaluations depends heavily on taxpayers' personal financial situations and circumstances. After the OIC, taxpayers can opt to pay the tax bill using the installment payment plan, which can substantially alleviate the tax burden. People might ask, if this a ways to reduce the tax payment, why not just always prioritize the OIC as the primary solution? The installment payment plan may seem less appealing because the taxpayers may still need to make the payments. The answer lies on the fact that OIC is a lengthy and a complex procedure. Even though taxpayers retain a representative to handle those cases, they must continually provide new information to their representative as the process can extend over several months. Given the time and sensitive nature of the required information, Taxpayers will need to regularly update and supply those details to their representative. This ongoing process demands significant energies and time. Many taxpayers may lack the capacity to prepare these documents, which can diminish the likelihood of a successful application. Therefore, taxpayers should carefully evaluate and consider the time and efforts they need before they decide to pursue an OIC. Uh, next page, please. Okay, now if you feel is all of those things is too complicated, you can always come to our office and talk to us. We can tell you those things. We can do the. We can evaluate your uh situations and give you the suggestions, based it on your situations. You can always send us a questions via emails and also call the numbers right there. Uh, and thank you everyone. Um, now let's go to our Q and A section. Yes, thank you so much, Kevin, O'Neill, and Bella. Thank you for all of the information. Um, this is the portion of the webinar where we will open up the floor to any questions. Um, you can tap, type your questions directly in the chat, or you can use the hand raise feature at the bottom of your screen, and I'll unmute you, and you can ask the panelists your question directly. Um, and while you're doing that, we do have a couple of questions. Um, and the first question is, how long can the IRS collect the tax debt? Thank you so much for asking this question. So 
to answer your question, the statute of limitation for a federal tax debt is 10 years from the date of assessment. So an example of this would be if a taxpayer filed 2013 taxes in 2014 and a balance was assessed, the IRS can collect the debt until 2024. Thank you. Um, another question, how long can New York State uh, Department of Taxation and Finance collect on a tax debt? I can take on this question. Um, is this is different from the federal one? The statute of limitations for New York State tax debt is twenty years from the date of assessment. For example, the taxpayer filed a tax in two thousand thirteen, um, and then the 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 tax balance was assessed in two thousand fourteen. New York States can collect the tax until two uh, 2034. Wow, thank you for sharing that. Um, if a taxpayer owes taxes to New York State, can they garnish Social Security income and, and pensions? Um, thank you for that question, Kendra. And to answer your question, no, New York State cannot garnish your Social Security income or pension income. So there's no need to worry about that. Very good to know. Thank you so much. I'm um, just checking the chat here. Alrighty, so it looks like we don't have any further questions at the moment, but we do want to let you know that Brooklyn Legal Services Corporation A um, offers a drop-in tax table where you can get personalized tax advice from our tax experts. We partner with Grow Brooklyn, and they cover topics um, from anything from your past year's returns, um, self-employment obligations, filing requir requirements, and also help you to responding to letters. And that tax table happens every other Thursday. You can scan this code here or visit our bit.ly link at Tax Talk Thursdays to reserve your 15 minute slot to speak to an expert. Um, and that happens every other Thursday. So if you have a specific question about a, a specific situation that you're going through, I would strongly encourage you to drop in on one of those days with us. All righty, does anyone have any other things they would like to add to tonight's presentation? All righty. Well, these are ways to contact us. Um, the easiest way I would always recommend if you have any questions um, and I'll, Lisa, hi there, I see is the drop-in regardless of income. Well, you can sign up and there are income requirements and restrictions. Um, and you can email us at info at bka.org um, to find out more about your specific situation. But I would definitely recommend um, joining that bit.ly link um, and they can definitely guide you um, and let you know what they can help you and not help you with. And I just want to add on to, to what you said, Kendra. Yes, Lisa, the drop-ins, you can drop in regardless of income for those. Thank you so much, Tamara. All righty. So this is the way to contact us. And um, we thank you so much for your participation. And thank you to our summer interns for all of the amazing information and presentation you put together this evening. Um, Tamara, is there anything you would like to add this evening? I would just like to say thank you, everyone, for participating and being in attendance. And if you do have any specific questions, please contact our office and we can assess your individual situation and provide free legal services. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. And thank you to our awesome summer interns. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.